Let's talk about inventory costing methods. And specifically, I want to talk about the difference between the FIFO method, or first in, first out, FIFO, and the LIFO method, or last in, first out. So if you remember from our talk about the income statement, the, the first part of the income statement looks like this. So we've got revenue, revenue minus cost of goods sold, cost of goods sold gives us our gross profit. Let me zoom in for a second here. Gross profit. Now the gross profit tells you how much more are you selling a good for compared to what it cost you to produce or acquire that good. So um, let's make some assumptions here. Let's use an example and maybe we're running a shoe store and maybe we acquire uh, our shoes from the manufacturer. So maybe we buy three pairs from the manufacturer in January. So here are our three pairs of shoes in January. And suppose that each one of these pairs here, the January pairs, costs a hundred bucks. So three pairs at a hundred dollars each. And then maybe I acquire two more pairs in February. But let's assume that costs are rising each month, or at least they are right now, such that in February, the pairs of shoes, they're the same exact shoes, it's the same model shoe that I'm buying, but now the manufacturer is charging me, the business, $120 per pair. $120. So let's take a look at how this is going to affect this uh, formula here, the, the formula that we use to compute gross profit and how that's going to change our income statement. So remember that FIFO is first in, first out. The first in is the first out. Let's actually zoom in here, make this a bit neater. first in, first out, and the LIFO method is the last in, first out, and we're going to see exactly what that means shortly. Last in is the first out. So um, if we are selling, let's assume that we're selling three pairs in, in either case. Now, if we are running a business and we're not using what's called specific identification, so when I go into my inventory closet and I take out uh, any three pairs of shoes, I might not know because they're all identical. They are, even though some of them cost more than the others, the, the, uh, the models themselves, the items themselves are identical. So maybe when I go in and I pick three pairs to sell to a customer, I don't know if I'm picking from the $120 uh, shoes that I got in February or if I'm picking from the $100 pairs that I got in January, or some combination. So we have to, uh, uh, as we do often in accounting, we have to make some assumptions. So if we are using the FIFO method, then we are making the assumption that the first items, the first inventory items that came in, are the first ones uh, to come out, the ones that actually that we start picking from to sell to the customer. So. One of the ways I like to differentiate this here is by thinking of first in, first out as though, uh, and let me make a little diagram here. Uh, so we're going to show the, our inventory supply uh, for both cases here. So let's just copy this and paste it over here. So for FIFO, I like to think of it as though we are putting our inventory through a kind of tube, almost like a conveyor belt that I'm representing here with these, uh, with the, in, in a simplistic way with these red lines, so that we know that the inventory came into, the, came into our warehouse in the following order, beginning with this $100 pair here, and then uh, all of these guys followed with the $120 February pairs coming in last. And that, because these were the first ones to come in under FIFO, these are also 
this one also is the first one to come out. So we begin picking with this $100 pair here, and then once we've sold that pair, we pick from this $100 pair here, and once that's sold, we pick from this $100 pair here. So these were the first three to come in, and these are the first three to go out, hence first in, first out. Now, to contrast that, under the LIFO method, we can think of it as though they are being picked rather than from this sort of tube in which they only move in one direction, we can think of it as though it's a kind of bin or maybe a closet that is kind of sealed off at this one end, so it's only got one opening. So just like, or while just like in the FIFO method, the inventory comes in in this order, again with this $100 pair leading off and then filling in behind are the $120 pairs, it's actually the last ones to come in, this, this last one, this $120 pair, that is the first to come out. So if we're selling three pairs and we're picking from the last to come in first, then we're going to pick this pair followed by this pair. followed by this $100 pair here. So you can see, depending on which assumption you're making, whether you're picking from, uh, you're, you're picking in the same order that you acquired the inventory in, or whether you're picking in reverse order, it's going to affect what it ultimately costs. So if we uh, factor this consideration into our income statement, we're going to have something that looks like this. So we're going to have revenue here, and we're going to have our COGS, or cost of goods sold, there. And then this gets subtracted from revenue to give us our gross profit, as we have up there. Gross, let's make that a little neater. Gross profit. So looking at this under each of these two methods here the revenue let's assume since we haven't made any assumptions yet about how much we're selling a pair for let's just assume that we are pricing each pair of shoes regardless of what it costs us to acquire them each pair of shoes uh, is priced at hundred and fifty dollars so if we're selling three pairs then uh, at, at hundred and fifty dollars each to the customer then that's going to be four hundred and fifty dollars in total revenue, four hundred and fifty in total revenue in both cases. So that part's going to be the same. The revenue is going to be the same, four hundred and fifty in both cases. Now it's the cogs, the cost of goods sold, however, that's going to differ depending on the, the method that we use. So if we're using FIFO, that means that we assume that the first three pairs to come in to be acquired are the first three pairs to go out to get sold to the customer, then we're selling three pairs, each of which cost us $100 for a total cost of goods sold of $300. However, in the LIFO method, since it was actually the last to come in that are the first to come out, uh, or the February pairs that are, that, the one that are being sold off first, uh, and we're selling three pairs, so we're selling the, the two we bought in February, and then one of the ones that we bought in January, we're actually selling three pairs, two of which cost 120, and one of which cost 100. So if we're adding our, uh, our three pairs up here, then we've got 120 plus 120 gives us 240, and then another one gives uh, for 100 gives us 340. So this cost of goods sold under LIFO becomes 340. Now you notice that this is different from our $300 cost of goods sold under the FIFO method. And then ultimately, this is going to have an effect on the gross profit. So in this case, in the FIFO method, we've got 450 minus 300 gives us 150 in gross profit. And in this case, we've got 450 minus 340 gives us 110 in gross profit. So you see how the difference can actually have a substantial impact on what we're reporting to our owners or our investors or our shareholders on the income statement.